I'm Amanda Dunyak Gillen, Director of Learning and Visitor Experience here at the Frick Pittsburgh. We are having so much fun creating these videos to give you access to some of the hidden spaces here at the Frick. Um, today we are going to explore the Frick Children's Playhouse, which dates to 1897. It is the building that you see behind me, and we're going to um, learn a little bit about the life of this building over the last 123 years. Before we do that, I want to say a thank you to the Regional Asset District for all of the support that RAD has given the Frick and its programs over the last 25 years. The city is so lucky to have that organization and this system that really helps to support all of our cultural institutions. So the building I'm standing in front of is the Frick Children's Playhouse. As I mentioned, this was built in 1897 by the architectural firm of Alden and Harlow. Um, this is a firm that Mr. Frick and the Fricks hired in 1897 to do a number of improvements to, the, to their property. They added three bathrooms into Clayton, their family home. They built the playhouse behind me and they also built the greenhouse that stands next to it, um, also in 1897. So we're going to um, take a look at the inside of the building in just a minute, but as I was talking about the, the life of the children as we stand outside, I, I wanna, want you to picture um, Child's Frick, age 14, and a large group of boys from the neighborhood. They had formed a, a drill group uh, called the Clayton Cadets, and there's a photograph of all of the boys standing out in front of this building. It's a wonderful photo from the late 1890s. Um, Child's Frick and, and the boys would use this playhouse as um, a place for meetings and for drills, and it was you know, one of the many, many events that happened here over the last 123 years. So we can go inside and, and take a look and talk a little bit more about some other things that this building was used for and that happened here. The Playhouse building is currently closed to the public, but as part of this special series of videos, we're going to take you inside and show you some of the spaces that you may have never seen or perhaps haven't seen in a long time. Let's go in. This is the entryway to the Playhouse. Um, this is probably a good place to talk about some changes that happened to this building over time. When it was built in 1897, um, it was a little different, or it was different on the interior than it, it, it was, it, it is now than it was then. The exterior is relatively unchanged, so if you look at the photographs from 1897, you'll see um, what looks like our playhouse today. The interior back in the 19th century was created with um, a couple of different spaces. One was a small parlor, which is just to the left of the entrance that we came in through. Um, it is now a staff office, but it was originally a parlor that Helen Clay Frick would have used to entertain um, you know, her friends. There would have been events that happened, perhaps parties. It was a space that was created with tables and chairs and dolls and a little sink and a stove. And it was an area that was really um, a place that speaks to her life as a wealthy young Gilded Age woman, um, where you know it was a place for her to learn how to entertain, how to host, how to be um, a wealthy woman who would be responsible for events like that someday. So that was on the first floor. Um, the rest of this first floor uh, was a bowling alley, which we'll see and talk about in just a minute. But the second floor up the stairs uh, next to me was different than it is now. Um, the second floor is now staff offices. Our marketing and, and um, PR department actually lives up here on the second floor. Um, but back in 1897, it was created as an open room. Um, there was a large open space up there, and there may have been also a dark room for Childs Frick, the Frick son, who was an amateur photographer. So that space was wide open until the 1950s when Helen Frick actually remodeled this building to become a home um, for some live-in caretakers um, on the property in the 1950s and 1960s and maybe even beyond. Um, so we'll go now into the largest space in the building, the bowling alley space, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the events and other things that we know happened here. So this is um, the bowling alley space. Uh, if you had visited the Frick between 1990 and 2014, um, you would remember this as our visitor center. Um, that's what this building served as until we opened the new visitor center in 2014. Um, this is the bowling alley area. It's a long room that goes all the way to the end of the building. Um, as you can see, it is not a bowling alley at the moment. In fact, we're using the space for storage and again for staff offices and other things. Um, but to talk a little bit about the life that would have happened here and the things that happened here in the 1890s and, and 1900, um, on the floor we have left or revealed a section of the gutter from the bowling alley. So you would sort of start here and bowl all the way down to the end. 
Uh, bowling alleys, you know, it, it's funny, it sometimes surprises people that the Frick children were bowling in the 1890s, but bowling was a popular Gilded Age pastime, and so it was um, would have been obviously very luxurious to have a bowling alley of your own, um, but it's something the Fricks loved, and in fact, Henry Clay Frick actually put a bowling alley in um, the home in New York City that is now the Frick Collection. So definitely a, a favorite Frick pastime and a Gilded Age pastime. Um, while we're talking about luxury and about um, having fun, it is definitely something that's important to mention that this building when it was created in 1897 was um, far more luxurious and well equipped in terms of utilities and warmth and comfort than honestly the homes of most Pittsburghers and people in the surrounding area at the time. This building had electricity, running water, um, gas, heat. I mean, it was very much a modern building and you know, it was created for the children to play in. And so that's something that I think we need to keep in mind in the sense of um, you know, it being very much a, a, a space created by a privileged family for privileged children. Um, the Frick children did do good out of this building as well. Um, starting in about 19, 1905, 1906, around there, Helen Clay Frick started hosting what became an annual Christmas party for underprivileged or, or economically disadvantaged children around the city of Pittsburgh. Um, there are lots of newspaper accounts of this, these parties that would happen in December. Um, the, the articles talk about Mr. Frick, Mrs. Frick, her brother child, some of her friends, everybody kind of being on hand for the parties that grew increasingly large. The early parties might have had 10 or you know, 15 children here, um, sometimes 20, and then over the years they grew to be about 75 to 100 children that would come to this playhouse on a Saturday or a day in December. Um, they came by train, sometimes they came with their parents, but it was a three hour really festive party where um, Helen had a Christmas tree and food and decorations and every child went home with um, clothing. So the boys got little suits, the girls were given dresses, um, they were given candy and books and toys and just a lot of things to give them, you know, have them help, have them have a very happy Christmas. So those parties happened here at least through 1912, possibly 1913 and that's when the family really at that point, they were living in New York City. They would come back here for Christmas, but after about 1914, they started staying in New York for Christmas, and I think that's when the parties were, were done. Um, you know, thinking about the life of this building, talking a lot about kids being in and among these spaces, it is our hope for the Frick Pittsburgh that this playhouse, when it's possible and when we can all be together again, um, is opened and reopened to the public as a family center um, to take it back to its roots as a playhouse so that this becomes an area where families and young children can learn and play and read together and explore and learn more about the Frick Pittsburgh when you visit us. So um, look for that to happen. Hopefully, you know, within the next couple of years, this will be open again to the public and will be a space that we can enjoy together. Thank you.